Hey, we're going to do a quick walkthrough here on how to talk to S3 from Rust. So first we're going to use the Rust-S3 library and we're going to use the latest and greatest here. A lot of work went there uh, lately. And then we're going to use Tokyo. All the code will be async here. So the first thing we're going to do is start a Minio server, which is a local S3 server. It's very robust and speaks the same protocol as S3, so very good for development. So we start this server here. We have the endpoint, we have the keys, and we have everything. And actually, that gives us a little web UI here that we can access. We can log in. And then we have uh, our little S3 bucket here in local. And in the code side here, here's the prep code. So we are going to turn off the unused warning here just to turn down the, the noise for now. And this is our Rust S3 imports. Will be async. So we are using Tokyo main here. And the first thing we're going to do is instantiate a bucket client. So here's how we do it. We do it with bucket and the function which is new with pass style. So that is important when we talk to Minio, such as the bucket name is part of the pass and not of the domain name, because otherwise it would be complex to set up. Here's our bucket name. We're going to do Rust-S3. The region. So the region doesn't really matter, but we are using the region struct to give the endpoint here, which is our local host, which is our Minio server. Obviously that will point to uh, S3 once you are in production. And then we have our credential, which is the access key and the secret key that we passed uh, to the Docker image. And then we are going to press save here and we're going to do a cargo watch, dash Q for quiet, dash C to clean, dash X and run. Such as again, we turn off the noise and we are pressing save again to make sure that everything compiles and works fine and everything is good. Okay, so now obviously nothing is printed because we haven't done anything, just created the bucket client. So the first thing we're going to do here is create a bucket if it doesn't exist. So to test if the bucket exists, we are going to make a head request to the root object. And if the code is 404, that means that it doesn't exist. So then we can create the bucket. So the code block to create the bucket is this one. We're going to create the bucket with a pass style. And we're going to use the bucket structure that we created before here such as we can give the name, the region, and the credential. And then we will await again, that is async, and then we'll give some information when it's created. So now we're going to press save here, and now it should rerun, and now if I go to the web UI, I press save, and then I see my Rust S3 here, bucket. Super cool. If I press save again, nothing should happen, and nothing is happening. Okay, so now let's go to the third step here, which is going to be to create the object. So to create the object, we are going to have first need a key, and then we are going to call the bucket put with content type, the key, the content as byte, and then the content type. And then again, we await here. So we're going to press save here. It's going to recompile and run. And now we go here, we reload, and we should see it here on the left side. So far so good. So number four here, we're going to list the bucket. So we're going to use bucket.list and then the prefix we want and then the uh, optional delimiter here. And that would give us the results. And if I toggle the inlay here from Rust Analyzer, it's a vector of result per bucket. So we need to iterate through the result, which is for a given bucket. And then we need to iterate through the content of the bucket to get the item. And then we can display the key here. So we're going to press save, and then we get that. So now the last step here we can do is get the content back. So to get the content back, super easy as well. The only thing we need to do is a get object with a key. And that will give us the binary here, the vector of U8, which then we use the str that we imported above to format it as a UTF-8, and then we display it. So now I can press save, and then it will rerun, and then now I get the content. Now if I put some new content here, press save, and then I see the new content. And now obviously if I have a file 2 here, press save, 
and that will create a new file because now this is a new key for this example code. And then I have the two files here, the two content. And if I reload it on the right, I will see my two files. And that's it. Thanks for watching. And until next time, happy coding.